Good morning everybody, what's going on? Today we're going to be replacing the front brakes, the rotors and pads, and the wear sensor on a 2005 E53 X5. The first thing we want to do here is safely jack up the car. We're going to do one side at a time, starting with the driver's side, to access the brakes and replace the rotors and pads. Now that the car is safely jacked up, we can remove the front wheel. And as you can see, now we have full access to the brakes. The first thing we're going to do is remove the brake caliper, the caliper carrier, and then the brake rotor itself. And that is the same order that we'll replace them in. First the rotor, then the caliper carrier. We'll slide the pads into the carrier and then, last but not least, reinstall the caliper itself. Now to remove the brake rotor, we do have a hold down screw right here, which is an Allen key. I believe it's a seven or eight millimeter. I always find it easier to remove this first before we remove the caliper. So I'm gonna use a six millimeter Allen socket. It is a six. Make sure that's in all the way. Whatever you do, you do not wanna strip this. That will make this job 10 times more difficult. Now we can also start removing the brake pad wear sensor at this point. If we look behind the strut, there's a little black box right here. We'll just open that up. There's usually dirt in here. Make sure you're wearing eye protection so you don't get sand in your eyeballs. Now we'll just squeeze the tabs here. Now that sensor routes through some other areas. We'll disconnect it here. And as you can see, the sensor wire goes on the reservoir cap for the brake fluid on the caliper. And here's where the wear sensor goes into the brake pad. The next thing I want to do is remove the anti-rattle clip. Next we'll remove the caliper bolts, which are concealed behind these plastic dust caps. And for the caliper bolts, we're using a seven millimeter Allen socket. Now that the caliper bolts are removed, we can remove the caliper. Now if you have a New England car and your brakes are being a stubborn, rusty piece of sh you can use WD-40 or some sort of penetrating fluid to lubricate all of this before you attempt to remove the caliper. Just as a side note, I would never apply any sort of lubricant or WD-40 to a brake system, only in this case because we're taking the rotor and the pad and replacing everything. Now you guys might find this interesting, but here's our one of our brake pads. There's the wear sensor. And as you can see, once the pad wears down enough to the point that it starts grinding on that sensor, Here's the thickness of the old pad, and here's a brand new pad on the left. Okay, so next we need to push the piston back into the caliper so we can install our new brake pads. They're much thicker, so that we're gonna need all the clearance here to fit the new pads in. Now I have this type of tool, which basically goes in here with the old brake pad and can push this in by threading this plunger here, and that will push the piston back into the caliper. You can also use a giant gooseneck pliers or clamp to squeeze right here and get force the piston back into the caliper. We're going to take an old pad, 
and this brake pad tool Now I also want to note that sometimes this piston doesn't go back into the caliper as nice as this. And it is very common, especially in New England areas, for the piston to be seized out because the pads have been worn down for so long that the piston gets rusted and it's actually just a seized caliper. So you can also get a remanufactured caliper. Uh, you're supposed to replace them in pairs. It's recommended that you do so. And I'll also put a link in the description for remanufactured brake calipers for this car. Okay, let's remove the caliper carrier and the brake rotor and replace this with a brand new OEM BMW brake rotor. Okay, so behind this caliper carrier we have two bolts. They're 18 millimeter. There's one up here and one down below. As usual, we're going to turn counterclockwise to remove them. Also, I would recommend loosening both of these bolts first before removing either one of them entirely. You don't want to remove the top one first and then start loosening the bottom one. It, trust me, it will be a lot easier if you just crack them loose first and then remove them both one by one. Now all we have to do is remove the brake rotor. You may have to hit it with a hammer to get it to come loose. Also this is not the best hammer. I would suggest using one of the sledge or the four pound hammers to get the rotor loose from the hub. Now we're going to install the new brake rotor. Make sure that you line up the new rotor with the hole for the hold down bolt. I also recommend ordering new hold down bolts. They're about 92 cents each from the dealer. We'll put those in the description below. We'll take our caliper carrier and reinstall it. Okay, so let's install our new brake pads. and install the new brake pad wear sensor. And don't forget to plug in the brake wear sensor. And we'll place the harness connector here back into the plastic holding carrier. And finally, we'll take our seven millimeter Allen socket and secure the bolts that hold down the caliper. And lastly, we'll reinstall the anti-rattle clip. All right, now we can lower the car on the ground and torque the wheel bolts to 80 foot-pounds. When you hear this click, that means the wheel bolt has been torqued to 80 foot-pounds, which we have set the wrench to. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. To do the other side of the car is exactly the same, except you don't have to deal with the brake wear sensor on the passenger side of the car. I hope this video helped you guys out today. If it did, please smash that like button and subscribe.